Hello and welcome to The Beat, a news and talk program brought to you by the Center for Community Media at Worcester State University. I'm your host, Blake Thorne, and today we will be interviewing Sarah Valois of the Worcester State Counseling Center. Thank you for joining us today, Sarah. I appreciate it a lot. Can you please tell us about your background and your path to becoming a counselor at Worcester State? Sure. Um, so I've been at Worcester State now. This is my fifth academic year. And um, prior to that, I worked in community mental health. So there's a, a local nonprofit youth and family agency in Worcester called UWINK. And um, I spent most of my career there in a variety of programs, um, serving um, middle and high school students with social emotional and behavioral needs um, and their families. And so um, as part of what I've done in my schooling, I'm a social worker and I have my MSW from Boston College. And, um, a licensed independent clinical social worker. And so um, I have that clinical independent license and was able to you know, eventually uh, take the work I had done in here to, to the campus here and be able to support students. Um, and for me, I think that college is such a critical time of growth and development. I, I loved my own college journey and it was really impactful into what I've done with my life and my choices and who I am now. And I really wanted to be able to take the work I had done and support college students. Well, that's very impressive and awesome. Can you remind our viewers what types of services the Worcester State Counseling Center offers? Yeah, so the Counseling Center, you know, I think is a great resource for students. Um, first and foremost, we're a confidential resource. And so even though we're on campus here, we still function like an outpatient counseling center would. So if somebody were to go off campus and seek services, um, the benefit is that they have us right here on campus. And we provide individual, um, primarily individual counseling to students, um, but also throughout the year, we'll offer different group support and group counseling for students. Um, we do a variety of different programming to, for outreach and training. So whether that be on mental health, um, training and teaching about mental health or coping skills, um, mindfulness and resiliency practices. Um, we help with training for RAs, for instance, when they begin um, so that uh, they have a better understanding about mental health and the impact on students and how to refer them. Um, we work with OLs similarly when they're training. Um, so we do a, a bunch of different other programs and training opportunities. Um, we'll consult with either students as well. If they have a concern about a friend or for themselves, we can just consult. Um, and as well as uh, faculty and staff. So we're here for them as well. If they're concerned about a student and they're not sure the, the path to take, then we're available to help consult um, for them as well. Oh, that's awesome. You got a lot of things to do for students. That's great. Yeah, we try, we try to do as much as we can and we're always open to ideas. So, you know, if, if students have a particular need or they're looking for a certain type of support, a certain group, you can always reach out to us and um, we're happy to collaborate and partner with other people um, at the university or with students in terms of certain needs that they feel like students have. You guys are very helpful. In general, are we seeing more cases of depression and anxiety in the United States due to the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the unfortunate hard answer is definitely. Um, you know, anxiety and depression have been common to students for quite some time now. And even prior to the pandemic, we saw anxiety in particular, as well as depression on the rise for college students. Uh, college students have, you know, and you might be able to relate to this or people you know, just a lot of stressors, right? There's a lot on your plate. Um, you know, students, whether it's academics alone and the pressures of academics, um, other students are dealing with financial pressures or job responsibilities or home responsibilities. And so the pandemic really took that to a whole new level for people. Um, the structures that they had in place, maybe the coping skills that they had in place, the routines, right, that helped them get through, all of that changed and really abruptly stopped. And so that had a tremendous impact um, on everybody, you know, particularly students. Mm -hmm. um, when they're used to being on campus, uh, certain parts of the days or the week living on campus, and then they need to go home. Um, home for some people isn't always a great environment. And so for some students that also increased stressors that they had or risk, risk factors that maybe they had in, in their homes. Um, 
So we don't have current data as of this fall in terms of where things are at, but as of April and sort of the summer, the, the data that was done showed very high levels of anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, a professor on campus, um, Professor Soisa, who had done a study of our students and found that um, in April, I believe it was when the study, the follow-up study was done, that students, I think there was about, um, uh, almost 100% of students were experiencing moderate to severe rates of depression, wow. um, and similarly 80% um, severe rates of anxiety. And that was the 250 students that were pulled, but that gives you a sampling of what, what was happening. Um, yeah. You know, the other studies that have been done are showing about two thirds of students that are experiencing um, significant um, anxiety and about a half that, are, that were struggling to function because of depression. So. You know, I mean, that that's some limited data, but just sort of looking, seeing some of that, you can see that it's pretty, it's pretty significant, I think, what people have experienced, and particularly college students. It's a hard topic. It's a hard topic. Yeah. For college students, what are some of the potential concerns for their well-being that we should be prepared for during these highly unusual times? You know, I think... Aside from the impact of depression and anxiety alone, right? I mean, I think if we look at that, you know, when someone's struggling with depression, it's really hard for them to follow through on things. It's hard for them to organize themselves. Um, motivation becomes really difficult. And so, as you can imagine, when you have work to do, right, that becomes really hard when someone's struggling with depression. Similarly, when um, they're struggling with anxiety, right, the fears and worries that they have um, can impact their ability to sleep. Um, we often see that sleep and eating habits are impacted with depression and anxiety. Um, you know, it makes it difficult to focus and study when people are struggling with anxious thoughts. It's hard to remember, right? They're reading, and then I often have students tell me I had to read the same thing multiple times, right? And to even just try to remember um, what they're learning. And so, you know, I think we have those those stressors that are happening for students, um, as well as I started to mention before that you have students now that maybe have more financial concerns. We've seen that that um, has increased greatly for college students. And so are they taking full classes? Do they need to work more? How are they balancing that? Um, you know, how are they meeting the financial obligations that they have? Um, many students have more home and family responsibilities now because of the pandemic. Um, if they're not able to be on campus and they're um, needing to stay at home right now, because their classes are remote or ev even just because their families need them to, uh, to help at home, that adds additional stressors to them, right? So again, we're trying to learn and yet they're, you know, our students are taking care of family members or helping out at the house or needing to work to take care of, of family members, um, right? All of those things add, add stressors. Um, we're doing so much online, right? And, and through Zoom, and yet if someone's in their home, there could be lots of other things happening at home too. Other people are there, other people are working, everybody's trying to get online at the same time, right? These things that can really make learning, learning difficult. Um, you know, I think with all these stressors, it would probably make sense, but we see that people um, are, more ag are more agitated, right? So you might hear of people getting in more arguments, being more argumentative. Um, we call that a fight or flight uh, response, right? It's a survival instinct when people experience significant amounts of traumatic stress. And so we go into the a default mode where we're sort of on edge, right? Um, we're constantly worried. Um, we might be overthinking things. We might be really argumentative and defensive, or you might shut down completely, right? And so you can imagine that in college, either of those things are, would be problematic, right? Um, if you get argumentative with your faculty or your classmates, that can be problematic for you. If you know there's arguments with your friends and supports, that can be problematic. And if you completely shut down, then that makes it hard to get done what, what you need to as well. Yeah. Um, we see more isolation now too because of the pandemic, right? A lot of the activities that people had done um, aren't even offered right now, or they're they're different, right? And so I think on this campus, we're being really creative about how we're trying to create opportunities to connect and stay involved. But for a lot of people, it's very different. And so that leads to isolation um, that can increase those symptoms of dep depression or anxiety. Yeah. Um, so, you know, many things, 
I could yeah. probably go on because there's. Just, I think the impact is so significant. It's just a very stressful time right now. Yeah. Does the counseling center have any tips or suggestions for community members to help promote mental, physical, and emotional well-being? You know, I think it's a great question, and it's probably the one, the most important things we can invest in right now is really how to take care of our well-being, right? Um, our emotional well-being, our physical well-being. Um, you know, I think we talk a lot about self-care, and people sometimes that gets tossed around, but I think what that really is is really thinking about what what you need to be successful and be as well and healthy as possible, particularly giving during these times, right? And it's not just one area. Self-care isn't just about, you know, going to exercise. Although for some people, that's really important. Um, for other people, maybe it is about finding connection. I think that right now, you know, when we look at the areas we're lacking, those are the areas we want to invest in, right? So uh, being creative about connecting um, with friends or family. Um, we'll often encourage people to, to get outdoors and not necessarily exercise, um, but find some way to, to move, find some way to get active. Um, when we're more isolated and um, removed, we can't engage activities, it's important to, to try to find a way to engage movement. And that could be going for a walk, that could be going outside, that could be hiking, um, that could be you know sitting outdoors someplace that's, that's relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, so connection, I think, is important. Movement um, or some type of exercise can be important. Um, engaging mindfulness practices. And this is another area that people, um, you know, sometimes maybe get weirded out by, right? Like, well, I don't really do that. Um, that could be anything, right? That's about taking moments to ourselves. Again, getting some fresh air outside, um, taking deep breaths. For some people, it is a more active meditation practice or yoga practice. Um, but there are lots of ways for us to try to engage mindfulness. And when it comes to our regulation um, and to be able to handle stressors, mindfulness becomes critically important. Um, and so I'd encourage people to find ways to do that, you know, and, and we're also a resource for people. I think, you know, having those outlets um, when you're finding that you're becoming maybe more argumentative or maybe you're struggling with motivation or struggling with anxiety because of what's ha happening, um, you know, Connecting for counseling can be a great resource to have an outlet. Um, we can work people through those tips. We can work people through certain coping skills to help them regulate if they're struggling. Um, and so we, we become an option, um, you know, that can also help with, with some of those things. That's nice. I definitely have been getting a lot of exercise, keeping my mind busy. Mm -hmm. What can faculty or staff do to recognize or help students that are experiencing stress due to the pandemic? You know, I think that that's another great question. And I think first and foremost, we encourage faculty and staff to be aware of, of the impact. So the things we've been talking about, right? And I think if we think about, if faculty and staff think about the way it's impacted them, to think about then how it might impact their students, right? Um, it's important to have structure in, in this time. And so even though it can be a difficult time for students to be motivated and feeling more anxious, it's important that students know what's expected of them um, up front. So, you know, we, last minute changes might become difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so to know what their expectations are, to um, find multiple ways to remind students, because again, if we're experiencing a lot of stress, it might be difficult for us to remember things we're hearing. So getting them, hearing them and seeing them in writing. Um, we encourage faculty and staff to be flexible within those expectations. So if there's ways to give choices for, for students, that can be really helpful um, and help them be most successful. Um, different options for the assignments that, that need to be completed. Um, and in terms of recognizing, you know, I think we, we wanna encourage people to, to recognize any changes. Um, that was typically better done in person, right? But if there's a student that hasn't been logging on to online classes or isn't showing up to in-person classes, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're struggling in a significant way with their mental health um, or with the impact of this pandemic, but it might. Um, you know, there's a lot of other stressors out there on top of the pandemic, right, where we've seen the political stressors and this climate and uh, racial tension um, that is going on as well. And so there's a variety of things that that are impacting our students. So I think being aware, being aware of any changes, um, 
you know, students who don't have their cameras on, well, that might not be because they don't want to engage the class. Maybe it's because of technology difficulties. Maybe it's because of home environment challenges. Maybe it's because of um, concerns that the student has, you know, themselves and their, um, their identity and, and being on, on camera. So I think, you know, we encourage faculty and staff not to have jumped to conclusions, but to reach out to say, hey, I noticed you weren't there. I noticed this changed. Um, you know, is there any, is everything okay? Is there anything that I can do? Can I connect you to on-campus supports? Um, I think another really important point is that they acknowledge what's going on in the world and how that might impact students and, and make sure the students up front know the resources that they have. Um, and then sometimes, you know, just giving reminders about those resources, I think is important as well. How can students help support each other during these times? I think students are probably the student to student support is one of the best ways to do this, right? Because um, students are more likely to reach out to their friends and to their peers. If you're going to see anybody, it's, you know, each other. So I think that, um, again, being aware of any changes, if a friend is acting really different, um, to check in on them, call our office to consult if you're not sure what to do. Um, we have a, a great program that I'll just put a plug in for. It's called the Student Support Network Program. And it's um, a six week, five or six week, uh, once a week for an hour program where students get trained to recognize um, and it, when a, another student is struggling and also know, and we train in how to respond. And so, um, you know, if anybody's interested, they contact our office directly or my coworker, Julie Glovin runs that um, with, um, Toledo Rotavallo also uh, runs it. And so, you know, reach out to us if, they're, if you're interested in getting trained um, as a student support network um, individual. Um, but I think if you're not trained in that program to, to just check in on each other. How are you doing? Is there a way to connect? If you can't connect in person, to, to do it virtually. Um, you know, if you're gonna connect in person, especially while the weather's nice, you can be outside you know, use the recommendations given around social distancing and being safe, but, but connect, right? I think if we can do it in a healthy way, that will benefit everybody. Um, and I'd really encourage students to speak up. I mean, I think the biggest thing to do is to speak up. If you're concerned about somebody, sometimes we think, oh, like that's just a phase or, oh, they, you know, made a comment about maybe, you know, not wanting uh, to live anymore, maybe just, feeling like, oh, I wish everything was, you know, over and I didn't have to do anything. And um, I don't know, sometimes comments are made that we brush under the rug because we think, oh, they're having a bad day or they don't really mean it. And so we'd encourage everybody to follow up on things like that, to make sure that, that we don't just ignore it, especially given the amount of stressors that people are dealing with right now. Um, in my opinion, it's always better to check in, to reach out, to get support than, um, than to feel like, um, maybe we, we wish we would have done that later. I agree, I agree. How does someone who wishes to use a counseling center services get started? Do students need to make an appointment or can they just walk in? Yeah, so unfortunately we don't have an online appointment system, but we do encourage people to either email or call. So the office is open, so if somebody walks in, you're not, you know, we're not going to slam doors on you. Um, but in order for us to regulate the amount of people actually in the office, because we have um, guidelines as to how many people can be at the front desk at one time, we encourage you to call. Um, and so, you know, I think, or go on our website, our number is 508-929-8072. Um, someone answers that phone Monday through Friday, um, pretty much eight to five, definitely nine to five. And, um, you know, and we'll, we'll get back to you. Um, you can send an email and to our main email address, which is counseling underscore WSU um, at Worcester.edu. And again, we'll, we'll get back to you. We'll have someone um, call you, call you back during a time that works for you to talk about to briefly what you need, um, if telehealth is an option. Um, and, then, and then we sort of go from there. And then we'll determine through talking with you whether it's a telehealth appointment or whether it would need to be an in-person appointment. And we have um, ways to, to assess for both. Very nice and accessible. Are there any upcoming programs being offered by the Counseling Center? 
Uh, well, like I mentioned, the Student Support Network um, will be starting shortly-ish. So I know that they're enrolling for that. So if there are students interested um, in this time and being trained as a Student Support Network um, individual, please reach out to us. Um, we're in the process of looking at group options and what we feel like you know, students might best need or benefit from. So I'd say be on the lookout for things to come. Um, part of my role on campus is to aid sexual assault response and intervention. And so I have run a, a trauma support group for survivors in the past. So that will be starting again shortly as well. So, um, so there are definitely things coming. We are collaborating with other offices on campus for um, different workshops coming up um, and, and things like that. So um, I'd say stay tuned. We will put things in Woo Weekly as they come out. Um, is usually the, the best place that we advertise as well as fact staff or faculty and staff. That's great, that's great. Is there anything else that you might want to add about improving health and well-being during the pandemic? You know, I guess one thing I, I'd say that I didn't say before is that, um, you know, if someone is struggling during this time, I want them to know that that is normal. Um, that the events going on in this world is not normal. And, and so sometimes I think there's stigma around how people are feeling or they might be feeling things that they've never experienced before, right? Well, we as a society haven't experienced this level of distress before. Um, and so if people have experienced uh, significant distress in their lives before, now this is adding to it. Um, and again, there's so many layers with the racial injustices that are happening, the political tension in the pandemic. I mean, this is really just um, a very unnatural environment that we're in. And so experiencing um, depression symptoms, anxiety symptoms, extra stressors um, are all very normal. And so I want to validate that for people and really encourage people to reach out, get support, talk to your friends, find ways to invest in, in your well-being, um, create routine for yourself is really important and, and really just um, take a look at, at what you need to be as healthy as possible. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for giving us your time and your answers and Absolutely. Uh, your services as well. We appreciate it a lot. Thank you, Blake. I, I really appreciate you asking about this topic and making sure that it's a highlight, um, that it is highlighted, um, as well as the support we can give. So I, I do really appreciate that too. Not a problem at all, sir. Thank you. Thank you for watching this segment of The Beat. Please remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We will see you next time.